Hi, hello, and welcome to another Divisium video. Today, we will learn about how using Divisium with Red Hat OpenShift Cloud Services. The first thing we need to do is uh, join uh, cloud.redhat.com, uh, go to Application Services, and stream for Apache Kafka. Where we can then create our Kafka instance by assigning a name and selecting a cloud region. But this um, will start the process of provisioning our uh, Kafka cluster. But this process takes a couple of minutes, so I will speed up this process so we can um, start to see and, and work with the, the, with the service. Remember, you can use this cluster for 48 hours. It's created. We can go then to our service registry instance and create one of those. Let's call it a registry. Click on create. And then again, this will start to provision our um, registry instance. And this is a, a more fast, uh, it's faster than the, uh, than the Kafka instance. But then uh, when we get that information, we are able to see and the uh, API uh, URL that we will be using uh, to access our registry as well. You can uh, create your service account. So I won't be showing you how to create that one, but um, you also can get uh, uh, some information on how to create service accounts and the token endpoint URL. We will be using that for configuring our um, Kappa Connect uh, uh, converters. So you see there's no artifacts currently, so we can now click on access and we're going to be granting access to our service account. So in this case, I call, I create one called registry and I'm going to assign the administrator role to that uh, account so I can um, create and upload uh, new objects and artifacts to my registry. Now we can go back to the, our Kafka instance. Now that the instance was created and it's ready to be used, we can then click on the name and we will see the uh, main dashboard for our cluster. So again, we're gonna be granting access to a service account. So we click on manage access. Then we select, um, in this case, I'm gonna enable uh, my uh, B, uh, BS code account. But it's the one that we are gonna be using for um, for this application and this example. So we click on next, and then we are able to assign specific permissions for each one of the resources. So we start with consumer group, and then we select uh, star, just to uh, use that as an expression. And same thing with topics, um, is and then a star. And also we will be doing the exact same thing with the uh, transactional ID. Again, is is and then a star for using that um, pattern. And then we uh, need to select the operation. So we are going to be assigning all permissions to this account. And then we can uh, click on save. Now we have uh, our um, uh, service account being able to access our Kafka cluster. Now we can uh, go and create the topics that we will be needing for this uh, demo. So the first one is going to be our Abra topic. We're going to select the default values for partitions and retention time, as well as replicas. And then we will create then the uh, following topics. So, so your topics uh, should look like this list um, with all the different tables and the different uh, control um, topics with the default values. For the division control topics, we need to select the um, uh, retention policy. So we need to edit each one of those topics and the cleanup policy needs to be on compact. And now our Kafka cluster has been uh, correctly configured to be able to connect with the division and store the information on our records. So let's uh, start a local instance using Docker Compose. Uh, we are going to be using a local in ISQL database and a local container uh, running division based on StreamC. So you will need bootstrap server, 
a service account ID, and uh, this image it will take the password for the SASL uh, mechanism from a file called CPASS. Now that you uh, create that, you can then just run uh, Docker Compose to start the um, local instance running on your laptop. This will uh, start both containers. Now we can uh, configure our CLI tooling for managing Kafka connect, uh, connectors. So we can then get the uh, information of our cluster to check that everything is running correctly. So we uh, click on info and then we get the information on the localhost um, instance running the Kafka 2.8. So we can also get the uh, plugins that are available uh, in this cluster. So we can see there are all the different uh, division connectors as well as some Kafka Connect plugins. Let's check the connectors, so get connectors, and we see that there is no connector configured in this uh, cluster. So for that, we will get back to the uh, JSON file with the definition of our connector. So the first part is the traditional MySQL configuration, but then for the history, we need to uh, configure the producer and the consumer of uh, each one by itself. Now that we have the uh, database history uh, configured, we can then uh, configure the information for the uh, e converter and the value converter. Those are the ones that are provided by the API Courier project. As I mentioned, we need to configure the Kafka serializer uh, for the key and, and the value, set up the uh, registry URL using the client ID and the client secret for doing the authorization in the, uh, in the registry. Now that we have uh, our JSON file ready, so we can then um, check that there's uh, still no connectors running and then we can apply, so this is the benefit of the C uh, SCSI CTL, the um, configuration. So that will create our connector that's called inventory connector for Avro. This will start the process of deploying the connector and then being able to um, read the information from the database and then uh, start running and sending that into Kafka. We can see if we get the connectors that we have one configured that state it's running and the there's only one task and that task is also running. Now that we have our connector running and we know that it's sending information into Kafka, we can then get back to our cloud.reha.com instance for the service registry. And if we reload uh, that information, we will see uh, within our registry that we now have uh, some of those uh, instances uh, or artifacts that are here with the schemas that we were going to be using. We need to just check that um, Division Impact was sending information into Kafka. So for that, we will be uh, using another CLI tool uh, called KCAT. And for that, we need to pass some information to that tool. So the first thing is we're going to be adding the uh, bootstrap servers and the client ID and the client secret for our uh, service account that it's accessing Kafka and add those as environment variables so we can reuse them. Then we can uh, use uh, KCAT uh, with that information using the uh, uh, SASL SL, uh, SSL mechanism to then query the information on our uh, cluster. So we can see that there's three brokers and there are all our topics that we created um, at the beginning. So it looks like everything is uh, fine from the connectivity perspective. Now it is time to check that uh, this customer's uh, topic has information in, uh, in it. So again, we're going to be using KCAT, but this time instead of just um, creating information on, on the cluster, we're going to be reading information on this topic. And we can see that there are four um, records now uh, stored in, in the, our topic. But however, if you see that information, it's uh, it looks like uh, it's um, it has some garbage within um, the uh, string because the uh, KCAT uh, application is uh, waiting for um, some strings, but obviously we are using um, Abro, so those are not showing correctly. So for that, we're going to be using the uh, service registry URL to be able to query for the schema and then being able to use KCAT to deserialize the information. And then the flag for the registry with the URL that you can get from the connection um, endpoint on the cloud. So we're going to be using the schema registry compatibility API. And for that, we also um, need to be able to authenticate with our um, registry. So we are going to be using 
uh, user and password because as you can see, it's, uh, it's requiring some uh, authentication. But now we're going to be adding our client ID and client secret that we select from our service account for accessing this service. Now with this information, we can then query the, uh, the data and then we can see that we are getting now actual JSON files. So not just a, a string, but also a JSON format. So um, to make it uh, uh, a little bit more clear, let's uh, use a parser. So let's use uh, JQ. It's uh, another tooling for being able to parse and prettify some of this JSON. So let's add this to our previous comment and then pipe that information into JQ. So that's our JSON parser, JQ. And we can see now it's a uh, it's, uh, print print with the uh, information on the after and the source uh, of each one of our records. So everything is now clear and we can continue using our own application. This is one of the things we can do with um, Ibisium and Red Hat Cloud Services. So thank you everyone and see you on the next time.